In this video, we'll be seeing how to create a complete e-commerce application in Laravel. So this is the demo of uh, the application that we are going to develop. You can see, let's log out and uh, log in once more. You have the option to sign up. So you can create a new account and then you can sign in. And uh, we can try sign in right now and uh, click on sign in. And you can see we are signed in to a user's account. You can see we are having the cart order details. Okay, this is the order history. And we are having the history of all the orders that we have made. The latest one will be on the top. You can see the order ID and the payment and then the products that we have added. Product 1 and product 3. So you can click on that and you can go to that product details. And we are also having the quantity and the price of each item here. We are also having the cart here and uh, you can delete and the quantity will be deleted. Okay, it will be reduced here. You can delete it once more and that will be totally removed here see now that is not there okay so we are having pagination for everything you can see the pagination is here for every single thing so you can click this and uh, there is pagination so on every page we are having the pagination implemented so this is the details page and uh, it looks like this we are having a add to cart page button here you can add the items to cart and it will be added here you can see the quantity is increased here and uh, you can add to cart from this page also. You can simply click this and it will be added. And on the cart, you can click on checkout and you will be taken to this page. You can fill in the details and you can click on proceed and you will be taken to the payment page. And you can fill in these payment details. You can fill the payment details and uh, click on pay here. You can see the product details here. Okay, you can see the quantity added here, the quantity 3 and the price for each item and the total here. You can see the payment is successful and uh, we are taken to this page. You can see payment has been successful and uh, you can go back to the order history page. You can click on this one and uh, you will be taken to the order history page. You can see the order ID, payment ID and the price, total price and all those details are updated here. Uh, that's because we are implementing the webbook for Stripe. We are implementing the Stripe webbook and uh, we are using that so this will be updated through the webbook so you can see the session will be completed so you can refresh this page and it will be added here properly and here you can also click on return back to home and you will be taken back to the home page so that's it so we are having stripe implemented totally and uh, this is a fully functional e-commerce application so this is the demo and uh, we can start with the implementation We have to install SAMB and Compose on your system. You also have to add PHP to your environment variable so you can access PHP globally. Then you have to install Composer. While installing Composer, you can also add the dependencies. There is an option. You have to check that and select the path to your PHP installation. You can simply download Composer and do that. We already have a video explaining all this. So you can watch that and follow along. You also have to enable zip extension on your php.in. So you have to do that. We already have a video explaining that. So watch that and follow along. Then you can start installing the Laravel installer. For installing Laravel installer after the process that we have done, you can run this command that is composer global require Laravel slash installer. You can also run this command. You can see you can use Mac, Windows. You have to use PowerShell in Windows and then the Linux as well. And this will install all the required PHP, composer and Laravel installer automatically you simply have to run this command and it will take care of that but we will have to install mysql separately so using samp will be better then we have to choose an id i will recommend php storm so if you are having a student id and all you can get this for free or you can use vs code and you can install all the required plugins and you can use this one as well so we need samp composer and laravel installed and also an id of your preference that's all now we can start with the project Let's verify if you have all the required things installed on your system globally. So let's type php hyphen hyphen version and hit enter. So you can see the version of php installed. Then you can type composer hyphen hyphen version. Hit enter and you can see the composer version here. You can also check the version of Laravel installers for that Laravel hyphen hyphen version. You can see the version of the Laravel installer as well. So now we are having the command Laravel installed globally on your system so you can use laravel new and then the project name we can create a project here so here we can create a new laravel project for that you can open command prompt from here 
cmd type cmd here and hit enter now you can open the command prompt and you can see this is the path that we are in currently so either you can open command prompt and use cd and then the folder name so you can navigate to this folder likewise okay or you can do what i did right now and now here we can create a new project with laravel new then the project name laravel new and our project name that is ecom and hit enter now we have to select the starter kit we can select none and hit enter we'll be doing the login and all by ourselves and we can select php unit or something of your preference we don't need git so no wait for this to complete now we can select the database so we'll be going with mysql so select mysql type mysql and hit enter now we have to run the migrations before running the migrations we have to start mysql because we'll be creating the database and all so you need mysql running you can also run apache if you need to check the php my admin panel so in that case you can start apache as well we need mysql running mainly okay so now we can uh, type yes here because we are already having our mysql running and it will create a new database you can see it created a new database with the name eco and it migrated all the existing migrations that is with the user table jobs cache etc we'll be looking into that later on and you can see there is a new folder you can see we have to navigate to this folder in order to run it so you can type cd and the folder name that is eco and hit enter so now we are inside the project directory now in order to run we have to use php artisan serve so run this command and you will be able to see your project running on this uh, url that is the local host url and you can see this is our default laravel page so our laravel application is up and running now we have to develop our application so we'll be starting with the login and registration then we'll be moving towards the home screen then the cart payment etc so now we have to open this project in our ide so this is the project directory you can see our laravel application and the project name so you can check the folder name that is ecom now you can drag and drop this to the vs code and it will open the project inside vs code and you can see the project is open inside vs code so i'll be using php storm so i have opened the same project inside php storm you can see the directory here so you can use any id i'll be using php storm because it is much easier to develop in php storm so let's use php storm now we can open the terminal you can either use the integrated terminal or open the cmd and all and that is up to you you can use any terminal you have to be in this exact folder of the project and here we can create a new controller so php artisan make controller and then the controller name so we are creating an controller with the name auth manager so inside this controller we'll be doing all the login registration part etc so create it and you can see it is added to the controllers so let's go to app http and the controllers you can see a new controller that is auth manager.php and here we can create a function that is login and uh, we also need one more function that is login post and we need to accept the request so you can see we are having login and login post and the login post is accepting a request and here you can see a use statement so you have to make sure that the use statement is exactly correct if you are using any other classes from any other library it will cause errors so you have to make sure that you are from using this exact use statement i'll give the source code of this on the description so if you are having any doubt or errors you can download and check now we can create a function for the registration we also need one more function for uh, accepting the post request so register post so this will return a view and this one as well it will be returning a view in which we will be typing our credentials and hitting the enter then this function will handle the login this function will handle the registration of the user we can add bootstrap to our project so go to getbootstrap.com and here we can go to the download section and download the compiled css and javascript 
you will get a zip file like this and uh, you can extract this one and inside that we'll be having the css and javascript so you can copy that from here and you can uh, go inside the project directory and uh, go inside the public and here you can create a new folder and name it assets and inside that we can paste the css and javascript and inside that we will be having everything related to the bootstrap so now inside our ide you can uh, see we are having the assets folder and then the bootstrap css and javascript so now we can create a new layout go to the resources views and here let's create a new directory layouts and here we can create a new file let's name it auth.blade.php and here we can paste this one and uh, you can see here we are adding the bootstrap css and the javascript you can see we are accessing it from the public assets and css then the bootstrap min.css okay you can see that here so you can see inside this we are having the min.css and we are accessing that and we have added the bootstrap css and javascript here and other than that we have added this class normal html skeleton so we simply have added a title here and this is the default title in case we are not passing any title and this is uh, for passing a style in case we need to pass extra javascript we can add a script here as well so let's add a script and this one will be passing the content here okay so this is for the login and registration so you can create a file like this you can post the video and type everything okay and after that you have to create a folder that is auth and inside that we can create a login login.blade.php and here we can design our login file so in the login i have added this so this is from one of our previous videos so in order to make the video smaller i have added the same code from that so you can post the video and you can type it so here we are extending the auth layout that we have created earlier and then we are adding some custom css here so you can post the video and type that then here our content starts so this is the main content you can start the content and you can end that session here so you have to start the session with the name that you are using here okay so he yield style and session style now this content inside this style will come here okay i am guessing that you have basic knowledge about laravel otherwise it could be a little bit difficult for you uh, you can also follow along we also have videos explaining all this uh, so you can watch that and later come here so you can post the video and type this and here in the main content we are having a form okay so these classes are important because we are aligning the form to the sender and all so you can uh, post the video and type that and all so don't make any mistakes here and uh, here we are having the form and uh, we have a route here as of now we haven't created the route so you can remove this one otherwise it will show an error message and here we are having the csrf token and uh, then this is a logo we haven't pasted the logo here we'll paste that later on and this is the title okay we are having this input tag for email you can change the place or around that uh, doesn't matter and the type is email and the name is email okay so this name is important and uh, we are showing the error message here okay so if the email is not present and all we'll be showing that error here so this is for email and this one is for password okay so here we are having the name password which is important you have to remember that and the place order and all you can change that accordingly here we are showing the error message and we are having a remember me we might implement it later on uh, so i'm not sure if we will do it or not according to the length of the video we will proceed you can also add a name for this so you can add it as remember me itself remember me so make it small okay so this one we might use it not sure according to the length of the video uh, we will be doing that and this one we are showing the success and the error message that we are going to pass from the controllers 
and uh, these things will be from the validator i will i'll be showing you from where we'll be passing all this okay so this is the success message you can see we are checking if the session has this success message and if yes we are going to print that in an alert alert success and same like that for the error and we are having a button of type submit then uh, we are also having a link to the registration page that's it and we are closing the form and all. that's it so you can post this and you can type this one now just like this login form we need to create one more that is for the registration so let's create a register dot play dot php and here we can copy the content from here from the login and you can paste that here whatever that you have added on the login page you can paste that here okay and uh, now we have to add one more field that is for the name okay so we'll be receiving the full name email and the password from the user so for now we can accept those details so you can add a field for name so i simply copied this email and added that here now you can change the name to name you can name it like full name or f name etc let's keep it to name itself and the type should be of type uh, text so you can set the type to text and uh, you can uh, remove this id okay you can change the id accordingly uh, we are not going to touch that right now you can change this placeholder to enter name and this to in the name itself okay you can change this in the address to in the name and this one you can change this to name here okay so if there is an error for the name we'll be showing that here okay and everything else is fine so you can change this please sign into uh please sign up so you can create a new account here okay and there is nothing okay you can remove this remember me remember me is for login so you can remove that and this one you can change it to sign up and this one you can change this route from here otherwise it will throw an error later on we'll be adding that you can change this to a login here okay so same like that we are having a link here on the login as well so you can remove this route from here otherwise when we run this we'll be running this right now so when we'll be running this uh, it might throw an error uh, most probably we'll be creating that route right now itself so we'll be adding that back okay so that's it so everything else is the same so we can add that simply add a name here and we can also remove the remember me nothing else now we are having the login and the registration ui you can create any ui that doesn't matter so in order to make this video faster i have simply skipped the part of designing the uh, ui part for the login and registration i have been doing this for almost all the videos so i have skipped that so the previous videos uh, we are explaining this in detail so you can watch that login part in the previous video so you can get this and all in detail if you want that you can use any uh, any ui from the internet that doesn't matter Uh, the main thing that you have to concentrate is the name you are using in the input tag so this name is very important because we will be using that on the uh, controllers and also you have to set the method to post and the action we will be adding that later on and the csr of token as well because we are using laravel so now that we have completed the ui part you can go to the controller and here we can return the ui so that is a return view auth dot login so that is auth which is the folder dot then the login file okay so we are passing that here then uh, here we'll be doing our login when we submit the details so we can validate if the details are present or not so you can use dollar request of validate which is an array inside this array we'll be passing an array inside this array validate so we can check if the email is present and password is present or not you can also add many other constraints like a minimum limit for the password if this is an email or not you can set it a unique and all i will be skipping that you can add that you can simply go client add more constraints now we can uh, get this name and uh, email and password to a variable credentials or something okay you can uh, get it like this okay hope it is visible for you okay so we are uh, fetching the email and password 
to an array that is credentials okay so from the request we are fetching only these two things okay and now we can pass that to auth okay, you have to select this uh, specific class that is eliminate slash support slash brackets and you can use the attempt function and inside that we can pass the credentials now this will handle the login and if the login is successful we can uh, return the users uh, and we can redirect the users to let's say home page okay and uh, we can use the route here okay route and uh, specify home home is the name of the route we haven't given any name so open the route web.php and uh, you can give a name for this route like name you can set it to home so this will be our home route so this is the name of the route and uh, we are accessing that here okay so you can call the route by the specific name and if uh, this fails you can uh, return some error message uh, instead of with errors you can use with and uh, you can pass an error so let's remove an array you don't need an array here so error and you can pass the message something like invalid email or password something like that okay we can pass an error message here okay so you are redirecting the users to login page uh if the post part is not successful that is the login is not successful here and you will be redirecting the users to that page login page with the error message we are displaying the error message here if you check this this part okay so this part we are showing the error message so whatever that we are going to pass with this will be shown here okay uh, therefore we are setting the error as the key and uh, here uh, can also pass a success message but that is not required anyway we are going to redirect the user to the home page and uh, that will be evident there okay so that's all with the login post part we have to create a route we'll be doing that and before that we can do the registration part as well so here we have to return a view to the page that we created here that is register.play.php and we are passing that view here just like this we are doing that here as well that's it and then we need to create a new user so here we have to accept the name email okay email you can set it as email unique user and all uh, let's keep it to simple that is required and uh, password as well okay i can also set like uh maybe like min sorry and set it like min and sorry you can uh, turn off the caps lock min and they can set it like eight that means uh, the password should be minimum eight you can set that constraints and all and here we can create a new user so for that dollar user equal to user model we already have a user model here by default laravel creates that model okay so you can see that model here so you're using this model in case you are getting an error for this you can add a, a table name that is dollar table equal to set the name of the table that is users and that's it you can add the table name here okay let's close that model and we can uh create okay you have to create a new user so this new user and that's it so you can see on the top we have imported the model that is the user and the request and then the uh, auth from this specific class okay you have to make sure that the import statements are correct your statements that you are adding on the top should be correct since i'm using a php storm it will be added automatically to the top so if you are having any doubt you can uh, check that here so i'm also giving the source code on the description here so you can check that now we can create the user pass the name so name is uh, request so it is not an array it is an object so name request of name just like that dollar user of email you can set it as dollar request of email then the password here for the password we have to hash it so use the hash class which is inside this uh, illuminate slash support slash brackets and you can call the make and inside that we can pass the request of password now this will encrypt the password and it won't be able to uh, we won't be able to retrieve that password so you simply uh, encrypt it and keep it there 
and the only way to know the password is to reset the password that's all so we'll be authenticating the user using the hash the password itself okay and uh, we can save the user so for that we can use an if condition and now here we can return a success message or something okay you have to return the user to the login page so after completing the registration we'll be returning the user to the login page you can also pass a message let's come here so with success and you can pass a message open oh, as visible okay okay so we are passing a success message redirecting the user to the login page and then pass the success message so we don't have this route right now we will be creating it soon so let's complete this and go to the so you can return this to login okay and with error okay because if the registration is failing you have to redirect the user to registration itself okay register and uh, okay let's use the route class or this route helper okay and you can paste the name here okay so that's it so now our uh, register post function is completed and we are creating a new user here so we are returning the user to a login page if the registration is successful else we are going to return the user to the registration page with an error message we can customize it accordingly uh, right now we can move to the route part and create a login and registration route so let's open the routes folder here and you can go to the web.php and here we need a route for login and registration so here i have added four routes here you can see one is a get method to login uh, this will be slash login and uh, we are calling the auth manager controller you can see a yellow line here you can type all tender here and import the class and uh, this is our auth manager so you can see this is the use statement you have to add on the top okay and we are calling the login function and we are naming it the login and then we are also having one more post request to the same route and uh, that is we are calling this function login post and the name is login dot post same like that we are having a get request to the register and the name is register and the function we are calling is register here so if you use control and click the mouse here you can go to the function which is pointed so this is a shortcut in the uh, php storm if you're using this code uh, the shortcuts will be different so you can use some uh, extension and all and you can do the same so you can uh, do a research on that and you can install the extensions and we are having a post request to the same register route and we are calling the register post which will be creating the new user and uh, we are naming it the register dot post now we are having these uh, four routes and this is the home route we haven't touched it we simply gave it a name now uh, you can uh, call this on the uh, login and the registration ui part so let's open the login blade.php uh, so here uh, we can add the action here okay you can come to the action on the login page and let's add route and then give the name that is uh, login dot post because we have to uh, use the post route here and that is this one okay so this will okay this will pass the route and it will call the function arrow okay everything is done here and here also we have to pass one more route that is for the registration so that is register you can see the name here okay register okay whatever name that you are going to give here use that here okay and one more thing that is the register.blade.php so here we have to add the action that is route give the name that is not login dot it is registered okay you can refer the name here okay use the exact name that you are giving here so paste the name here and it will call the route here and uh, now uh, what else we have to add okay here a link to the login so route okay, and give it login so this will uh, you should not use login dot post here okay because we are calling a get request here so we will be making a get request here so you have to call it like login which is the name that we are giving for the get method this get method and also the post method that is very important you have to uh, understand that 
So this is the get method to the same path and this is the post method uh, to the same uh, URI. Okay, so you have to understand that we are having different names for that. In order to identify them differently, we have given the uh, different names for them. Okay, so that's it. Now our login and registration should be complete and uh, we should be able to run it. So our project is already running on the terminal. You can see that here. Okay, let's open this one. And uh, you can see the login and registration uh, link automatically appeared here. That's because uh, the default template uh, actually checks if the route exists or not. And it will show the option here. So you can simply, uh, if that doesn't happen to you, or you can simply uh, avoid that. That is not important. So you can simply type slash login here. Okay, simply type slash login here on the URL bar and hit enter. Now, this is our login page. So, the image is not present. Let's copy and paste the image. So, this is the image that we will be using. So, let's copy the image and we can paste that here inside public assets. Let's create a folder IMG and we can paste the image here. Mm -hmm. After pasting the image, we can go to the register and the login view. Here, we can check if the path is correct or not so this is the image and you can see the file name and the path is correct here so you can see that here okay so this is the file name and uh, this is the file name that I have given here and it is correct and in the registration as well you have to change the path correctly okay and in the registration also we are having the correct details now we can uh, check if it is working Let's refresh this page and the image is working. So we have added the logo and let's click on this create a new account and that is taking us to the sign up page. So you can see that here. Okay, so let's try creating a new user. So let's enter the email. Okay, let's give a name and that let's enter the email and now let's create a password and let's click on sign up. Now the registration is successful and we are taken to the login page. So now we can try entering the login details and uh, we can try clicking on the sign in. Okay, the password was wrong. Let me just enter it once more. Let's click on sign in and you can see sign in is successful and uh, we are taken to the home page. And you can see uh, right now on the default Laravel page, it is showing dashboard here. If you click on this, it will take you to a page not found because we haven't added that. So this, uh, you can understand that login is successful. Uh, so this one is already added to Laravel default page. Uh, you can ignore that if you don't see such a thing as well. Uh, right now you are taken to the home page. That means you are already logged in and uh, login is successful. Now we have to handle the other things like uh, we will be adding a now bar on the top and that will be showing the logged in user details like uh, the profile name uh, logout a uh, profile page and the home page etc so now we can uh, get started with the actual uh, e-commerce part uh, right now we have completed the login and registration part of this project now we can go to welcome.blade.php this file and uh, here we can add a now bar and all so let's remove everything which is inside this one Okay, and here we have to create a new layout. Okay, so let's create a new layout inside the layouts folder. So let's name it default, default.play.php. And inside that, we can copy uh, this uh, auth.play.php, whatever that is inside that. We can paste it inside the default and uh, we can remove these classes. Okay, these classes are not required. You can remove that and everything else is fine you can keep that like this okay so you can add this to the default blade okay uh, that is the layout okay and after that we can require this that is extend this okay so extend and that layout dot default and now if you refresh that welcome page we'll be having a blank page with the bootstrap added now we have to add a now bar and a footer so let's create a folder and a file for the footer and 
navbar so here inside the views we can create a directory includes and inside this includes we can create a file for header and one for the footer so now we have header and the footer files let's open the bootstrap documentation and uh, we can check if we can find a navbar so you can see this one you can open this url and uh, here uh, let's check for a, a good looking navbar so we can use this navbar okay and let's copy this one and we can paste that inside the header.play.php so our navbar is added here okay so in the footer maybe we can add just a footer and uh, let's type something so let's make a paragraph and uh, let's type before and that's enough we will come back to the footer later on so let's keep that right like this right now and uh, now we can add this header to the uh, default blade where we have added that here okay now here we can include it at include and uh, we can call includes dot and the header just like that we can add the footer as well at include includes dot footer so if you refresh this page we will be having the header added to the welcome page so if you refresh this page you can see a header and the footer added to this page see now we are having the header here and the footer is just below that it will go down as we add more content uh, we can uh, work on that so now we have to add a profile page maybe a profile section here or an icon or something here and on clicking that we need to add a logout and uh, maybe a profile page and some details about the current logged in person so we can do that so that we can open the header play.php and here we have to add a logout function so let's add that uh, somewhere okay let's add that here itself okay so we can come here and uh, let's remove this one it is not required and uh, we can uh, change this margin end to margin start auto now that will make all these two align to the um, right side and uh, we can change this pricing to or uh, maybe logout and let's add the route here before that we have to create a route and the function to logout so let's come here and uh, let's add a uh, get request get request is enough for logout and let's name it log out change the name and the function as well now we have to create this function for that you can uh, come here somewhere and uh, let's create the function logout and uh, we can simply call auth of logout and that's it now you can redirect the user back to the login page that's it so logout is complete and uh, you have to call this from the route okay we are calling that and you are good to go now uh, where is it okay we were inside the header right okay now we can call that route here so route and we can call logout now the logout is added to the header section and we can also add one more thing we only need to show this logout if the user is already logged in otherwise there's no point in showing it so for that we can add at auth if the user is logged in then we can show the let's end the auth here. okay okay show the uh, logout link otherwise we will not be showing it okay so that means here if the user is logged in we'll be showing it otherwise uh, we are not going to show it okay so let's try refreshing the page here you can see when we refresh the page we are having the logout home and all those links aligned to the right section and we are having the logout button here let's click on the logout and uh, you can see you are redirected back to the login page because you are logged out you can go back to the home page and you can see the logout link is not visible here so that means it is removed we are not logged in and it is removed now we can uh, work on showing the uh, list of products on the home page for that we have to create a migration first so let's create a migration php artisan make migration and the migration name so we are going to name the migration products and hit under so this will create the migration file and it is created now we also need a model for this uh, table that we are going to do so let's change this migration to model 
and uh, let's change the P to capital. So products. So we are going to have a model as well. And let's minimize this one and uh, let's go to the database. Okay. And migrations and the migration products. Okay. And here we have to add the table. So let's create a schema, create product. And uh, inside that we need the ID. Then uh, we need uh, name. Of course, we need name. Let's change name to title. Okay. Title. And uh, we can add, uh, of course, we need a slug and uh, we need a description and uh, we need an image okay so we might have to handle the image upload and all okay or we can paste the uh, url instead of handling the upload for now or let's do that no problem okay we can change this to text that is fine okay and uh, we need the timestamps okay dollar table table Okay, we need the price, so we can set the price as a float. Okay, that's fine. And discount on all, we can work that work on that later on. Okay, dollar table, and uh, then we can add the timestamps. Okay, timestamps, timestamps, and that's it. So it is timestamps and not timestamp. Okay, uh, this will add created at and uh, updated at to the table. You can see this one. Okay. And I can give the semicolon here and uh, that is it. So this will create the uh, table products. Now we have to add the down, which is schema, drop of exits and products. That's it. Okay. So our migration for the product is complete, I guess. This is a very simple table. Uh, we are not going to, you can add more uh, columns according to your need and uh, you can customize it. It's up to you. Uh, this will be enough, I guess. If we need more, we'll be adding that later on. So let's run the migration. So for that, PHP act artisan and migrate and hit enter. Now the migration is run and can have the table. You can see the table on the PHP my admin. We'll be checking that later on. Okay. And you can also specify the table name. It is not required, but in case you are having a different table name and all, you can add that simply specify the tables exact name here okay you have to specify the exact name here and it is not required because we are having the same name for the product, uh, model and the table as well so that's not required and uh, now we can create a controller okay can create a controller for this one so let's make a control controller and uh, products manager Okay, let's name it like that and the controller is created and inside the controller let's open the products manager controller and we can write a function let's name it like index or something index list or something and we can get all the products products and let's get all of them from the model that we just created so let's you can also use get or you can also use all here okay any, anything works and uh, we can return that to the view so we are not having the view products and uh, let's create that and let's okay we are already having a welcome uh, you can either rename it or delete it it's up to you uh, so i think it will be better to create a new view uh, let's delete this welcome it is not required so let's delete the view welcome it could show you errors in this uh, PHP storm. That is fine. You can simply delete it, ignore it and delete it. Okay. And uh, we have to create a view that is the products. I prefer to change this. Okay. Let's pass it with the go back and the pass the product. Okay. So here we are passing, returning a view that is products and uh, we are passing the variable that is products so this contains all the products list of all products and they will be having the access to this inside this view so well, let's create the view okay let's create the view here let's minimize all this okay side here we can create the view that is product products dot blade dot php and here we have to extend okay extend layouts dot default okay so the auth part we will be only using it on the login and registration everything else will be using the default plate okay and uh, here 
we have to show the list right so for that let's we can pass the title of course okay uh, earlier we had a session uh, yield section for the uh, title so let's add that section you can specify the title here title and then pass the title let's name it ecom home or something like something you can name it anything okay that doesn't matter so if you are doing it for a real project i will recommend you to use a uh, su friendly title that you wish to show on your uh, search result and all uh, since this is a very simple project we are going to do some other names okay that doesn't matter okay and now we can add the section for a content okay and end the section if you are wondering from where we got these names and all you can go to this default layout and you can see yield content yield style yield title we are passing the default title here nothing default here on the content side okay sorry this is the content and uh, you can see yield script if you want to pass any script you can use that so we need to pass the content anyway so we are passing that here and let's open the section okay, before that we have to set a container okay let's use a main tag or something and let's add a class container okay and inside that maybe we can set the section inside the section we can show the items products that we are passing so for that let's uh, use a for each at for each we are having products city s and as dollar product and uh, inside the for each we can print the details like dollar product of title okay and let's print the title let's uh, keep it inside a paragraph so it was much more properly visible okay let's paste that here okay okay now we need to add some data to the table so let's open the php my admin and add some dummy data so let's open the mysql admin section from the control panel sam control panel and uh, you can open the php my admin here so we have opened the php my admin and we can see the database that is ecom and let's open the products table you can see the users table here and you can see all the registers registered user details here let's open the products and let's insert something so go to the insert and let's add some title here and let's add a slug and uh, we can add the description add the description here something here and uh, we can uh, another thing was image okay so for the image we can add the url here for now so for the image we can uh, open this and let's take the url from here okay let's uh, copy this image url from here okay and we can add that here okay so add the image url from somewhere here we'll be uh, seeing how to add this properly we'll be developing the admin dashboard side as well okay so right now we need some data to show what all things okay let's add the price here and uh, let's okay you can keep it to empty because it will be automatically filled okay now you can click on go okay let's scroll down and click on go okay now that product is added so if you come to the home page and uh, refresh this you can see okay welcome not found so that is because we have to come here and uh, change this view here okay this one so you can change that to uh, let's change that to product okay so we have to call the function so we have already created a function so let's change this to the product manager controller and uh, give a comma and call the function that is index i guess okay so let's add this as a use statement on the top okay so we added this line and added this here okay so don't get confused added this line and this line that's all okay now we can once more refresh the page refresh this one and you can see product one here let me just zoom in okay you can see product one so if you add one more item it will show product two let's add product two and uh, you have to set this slug as unique so we forgot that we will be adding that okay let's get one more image okay image url let's copy it and paste it here and uh, let's change the price to something else okay and hit on go okay so we are having two products here 
let's refresh the page here now we are having product one and product two okay so we have to display the image price and all those details in a proper ui so we'll be using card view and having a shadow and all those things so let's open the products.play.php here and uh, we can create a div here and here let's create a column okay let's create a row so class a row and inside that we can create columns div so class is going to be call we can change that later on okay now let's do it once more let's keep four columns and uh, one row okay and uh, we can add these here okay let's let's remove this okay we only need one and uh, we can copy this one from here and paste it here and let's add this div here and the paragraph inside the div okay so this should add it inside the uh, row and column and uh, let's refresh the page and check refresh this page and you can see product one product two since we are only having one it is showing like this okay so you can set this size properly so maybe we can set it to four four columns okay so you can come here so you can set this to 12 for the lowest one and uh, for the medium call iphone m empty and uh, then we can set it to like uh, let's set it to six okay and let's see how it looks call lg we can set it to let's make it four okay and this should work let's refresh the page and check refresh this page and you can see it is coming one after another that's because we have zoomed in this page let's zoom out let's zoom out a little bit okay so this is a medium and let's zoom out a little bit more and you can see this is the 100 percentage width and you are having one two three and four space for two more here okay so that means it is working and uh, we have to change this to a card view and all so let's do that and we also have to set a minimum width for this container otherwise sorry maximum width for this container otherwise it will be not looking good so we can do that so let's come here and in the main section on add a style tag and uh, let's set max width and uh, let's set it to like 800 pixel let's see and uh, then uh, we we can add two more products so we will be able to work with it properly and we need to show images and all right okay so let's add an image so let's okay sorry you can remove it and let's add an image tag and uh, let's call the image url from the dollar product it's product not products okay so it is image and uh, you have to set the width and height and all so width let's set it to 100 percentage and uh, let's see how it will be refresh the speech and you can see image one and two then the space here okay uh, title here okay let's add two more products to the table okay so now we have added four products so we are having pro four products and title all these things we can set the uh, let's set the slug to unique okay so come here and uh, you can set this to unique here okay so come here and uh, click on this more set this to unique okay that's it now you will be having this lock sign here near the slug let's go back to the migration and set that unique there as well so let's open the database migration and the migration and here we can set this to unique here okay so you can set this before migrationing migrating or you can uh, migrate uh, fresh once more that will delete all the details or you can migrate this specific uh, file once more so you can do that so you can simply google and do that and all so it is easier to add that on the php my admin site so let's go back here and uh, refresh this page okay you can see we are having three columns and uh, let's make it four okay so you can come here and uh, let's change it to three here that will fix it okay so you are having 12 in total so you can adjust the numbers likewise okay refresh this page and you can see four products okay four columns okay now we need to add the slug okay we need to add, make this clickable and let's add a card and all those things so what all things do we have description 
and price okay so let's show the price as well here so for the price you can either add that along with the title uh, or you might want to design the title a bit more so you can add that after the title so let's create a span or something and uh, let's let's make it a p paragraph or div let's make it a div and uh, let's add dollar product it's product and not products and the price so it will show the price now we are having the description but that is a long one so i chose not to show it you can also add like something like a metadata or a meta description or maybe like another short description option at all and you can show that here or you can also uh, show portions of that description here but for now you can avoid that and let's make this link uh, sorry title clickable so let's add a link here and href now we have to pass the slug here so we haven't done that so let's for now let's keep it empty we will be adding that here okay as soon as we add the route we'll be adding that here okay right now we are not having the route so it is not possible so refresh this page and uh, you can see the prices here okay so we are having a space and all so you can avoid that okay let's uh, work on that as well now uh, i think it is better to show the price here okay so let's uh, make that like that and uh, the link is working you can see that let's add a card view so you can come here on the column section and add a card class here you can also specify a uh, padding maybe okay padding let's set it like two or something and um, we can add a shadow okay let's add a shadow shadow small that's enough okay and one more thing was okay we can add this here okay so let's let's make this a span and you can cut this from here and paste it here okay let's add this line here you can avoid that okay that's not needed and you can change this div paragraph to div okay so this is what we're having okay so you need to add a space here okay and this is it okay so you can work on the ui according to your need i am go not going to work on the ui a lot so this will be it so let's refresh the page and you can see the price title link and all the card and all those things we can give a space between this for that you can come here and uh, we can uh, put these columns to another div on the top okay let's add a div here and uh, let's create a class and add all those classes here and then let's close it after this one okay and this is it okay so you can uh, change it like this okay change it like this and uh, this should uh, solve the issues so let's go back and refresh the page refresh this page and you can see there is proper space and all okay so this is our card view okay you can specify the currency and all okay so we'll be using dollar and uh, we can give the symbol and all there okay if you are having multiple prices you can uh, handle that or oh, we'll be keeping this to simple so we'll be using one price and one currency and all so it will be dollar and we'll be using stripe for the payment integration uh in india raisepay will be better option uh we already have videos on how to implement raisepay we also have webbook implementation and all those things in detail so you can watch that and uh, you can do that exactly here so we'll be using stripe so let's move forward so let's add a dollar symbol here and uh, we can also add this uh, line here that will make it look better okay and uh, let's okay let's save it refresh the page and you can see the price and all the details okay now on clicking this link we have to make this work okay so right now we are not having anything so it will not uh, work so on clicking this links we have to take the user to the details page of this uh, specific product okay so if you come here uh, if you click on this uh, download you can see it will take you to the details page and you can see the details page here okay so just like that uh, we'll be adding that okay so you can see this is the details page and and we'll be having a add to cart option here okay so here we are having a download button but instead of that 
uh, here on our project we'll be having a add to cart option and we'll be adding a cart option here and on clicking the cart we'll be having all the list of things that you have added to the cart and the uh, option to check out okay okay so let's work on that now we can create a new view here okay you can create a new view so let's name it details dot play dot php and uh, here uh, we can copy this from here and uh, paste it here and uh, you don't need this uh, for each so we can remove that so here we'll be showing the details of the product so for that we can go to the controller product manager and uh, here we can create a function details and uh, we need the id or the slug okay so we can pass the slug here we can pass the dollar slug here with the slug we can uh, retrieve the product so product equal to product the model and uh, you can var add a var condition and uh, we can specify the slug and you can get the first item okay so since the slug is unique you will only be having one value that is returned so you can get the first one and that will be it okay now we can return these details and uh, we can return that to the details view so this is it and we are passing the product here so let's go to the products page here details page here and uh, here we can simply print this dollar product and see how it is now this is our dollar product we can add a route so in order to view this we need to add a route so go to the web.php and here we can add a route so let's add it here route it is a get method that we need and uh, we can add slash or maybe like you can simply specify this like this or you can also add details slash okay or like you can also add it like product slash okay you can add it anyways uh, that doesn't matter you can also keep it like this as well okay and then we can pass the slug here okay so you can either simply pass the slug or you can also add this product slash okay and uh, now we can call the product manager and okay and the function is uh, it was what was the name okay details okay so call the function that is details details okay and give a semicolon you can add a name for this route as well okay let's add a name so name we can add it like products dot details okay now we can use this name copy this name and uh, we can go to the products dot page okay dot play dot php this page and uh, here we have an actually okay a link here so here we can add the route and uh, we can give the name here so here we need to pass the slug as well so give a comma and uh, you can pass dollar product of slug okay that's it so now we will be able to access this link as well so let's go to the page and check so let's refresh this page and you can click on this product one or two and you can see we are getting the json as the response now we need to uh, use some views and all and display them properly so we'll be displaying the title we will not be displaying the slug we'll be displaying the description and then the image price etc so we can do that we can see the two product two id two and all those details and for three you can see id three and the link price etc same for the four as well okay so it is working properly so now for the listing page you can also add a uh, pagination it is very easy to add a pagination you can simply come here and add paginate and they can specify let's specify two because uh, we only have four details so let's specify two now you will get the links uh, for the next and uh, previous etc on the products view page come here and here after the for each okay where is it okay so after this for each maybe after this row we can add it so simply add it there was something and inside that we can call dollar products so dollar products and i can call links and this will print the links okay since we are using bootstrap 5 we can specify that on the let's go to where is it okay 
providers and you can open the app service provider and here on the boot method okay hope you understand we are inside the app H and app then you can see the providers then the app service provider okay and here we can specify the paginator you can select this one eliminate slash pagination and you can set this paginator and you can use bootstrap 5 okay bootstrap 5 since we are using bootstrap 5 you can select that and that's it now the ui will be of that of the bootstrap 5 so it will look better now you can simply refresh this page and you can see the pagination is added see it is very simple you can simply add the pagination like this so let's add the pagination to something like five or six something since we are having four we can keep it to eight okay so you can go back to the controller and what is it okay here we can set this to eight so now we are not having the pagination it won't be there refresh this page and you can see there is no pagination because there is only four products if you having more than eight the pagination will appear here okay now on the details page we can come here and we can display the image let's display the image here img and uh, can specify so see here we can uh, call uh, okay since this is just the direct url you can uh, simply paste the url here so dollar product of image okay image and uh, that will show the image here let's set the width to something like 100 percentage itself uh, we will adjust it accordingly later on okay now we can show the product uh, title so let's set it to h1 or something and uh, let's print the product title and uh, the next one is description so let's set it to a paragraph and uh, it's a description and next one was price so we can set that here okay on the top price okay and uh, that's it now we can simply refresh the page and check let's remove this json printing here now click on this item and uh, you can see image here title here price here and the description here now we can design this further but uh, first let's concentrate on adding the add to cart button here and then we'll be adding a cart feature here okay so cart page here and inside that you will be able to see list of all the items that you have added to the cart so we'll be mainly focusing on the functionality rather than the design you can use any template out there and you can implement it accordingly we'll be designing it a little bit uh, but not a lot okay so for that we can come here and maybe add a button here sorry we can add a link here and then we can set a href tag and let's add it something like add to cart and uh, we can set some classes class btn and btn uh, maybe like success and uh, you can add images and all like some icons and all it will make much better looking we need to create a function let's go to the controller product manager and here we can create a function add to cart here inside this one instead of this request we can maybe pass id or slug something okay something that is unique and uh, we can add the item to the cart table okay so for that we have to create a cart table first of all so let's come here open the terminal and let's create a migration migration php understand make migration and then the cart okay and hit enter and you can see the migration here okay so let's okay we can add the migration that is schema create cart okay let's just make it bigger so you can view it okay you can add a semicolon here then you need to add a id then now we need user id of course you need the user id then we can add the product id so table of we can use let's add int and we can we can add the product id okay you can make this as well integer okay that is fine you can use either and now we can specify the timestamps now this will add the created it and updated it scroll down and we can add schema drop effects it's and the table name that is cart so now our migration is ready and uh, you can run the migration php artist and migrate and that is added now we can create a model for the cart so 
PHP, Artisan, Make Model, Cart, hit enter. And uh, you can see the model that is created here. You can see that inside here. Now you can open the product manager and here we can add the item to the cart. For that, let's create a new variable that is cart equal to new cart. Use the model. Okay. So you can see on the top, it will be added to the top. The use statement will be added to the top. Okay. And now we can add the details. That is, we will be adding dollar cart of user id so that is equal to we'll be having the details on the auth user id will be available here okay of user and then the id that's it okay and this will give the user id then uh, we can add the product id so we are adding the product id from here okay and uh, one more thing is uh, let's check what all details we need okay where was the migration okay let's open the migration and check okay user id and product id that's it okay that's all uh, needed for now we are keeping it as simple as possible and in the if condition we can save it okay and uh, you can return success message and all return back with success product added to the card successfully okay and else we can return back with error okay okay that's it so that's all now this will be the function to add the product to the cart so let's go to the web.php route part here and uh, we have to create a new route so let's duplicate this route and uh, we can okay this route will be a get method and uh, you can specify cart slash instead of slack we are passing id and product manager and then the add to cart okay and uh, let's change it to cart dot add okay so this is our route okay it is a get method and uh, this is the path this is the id that we are passing and uh, the controller and then the function then the name that we are using is this one that's it so let's copy the name and uh, we have to go to details page or it is okay details dot play dot php here and you have to call it here simply add route and you can paste the name give a comma dollar product of id pass the id here that's it very simple now when you click on this button the link will be loading and it will add this product id and the currently logged in user details so this has to be shown only if the user is logged in or not only if the user is logged in okay so we can go to the route and maybe add a middleware so let's create a route group so route let's uh, let's add a middleware first of all you can check it to auth and then we can group it group and pass the function let's open it and let's close it here now you can cut it this route from here and add it inside now whatever route that you're going to add inside this route group will require the user to be logged in okay so if the user try to add without logging in it will be redirected to the login page so you don't have to write the extra code for that okay so it will happen automatically that's all uh, managed in the middleware part okay so we can try running this now we can simply refresh this page and uh, you can see the button is here so if you click on this right now the user is not logged in you can see there is no logout button here so if you click on this button it should redirect back to the login page so click on this button and you can see we are on the login page now so you have to enter the details that we have created and click on sign in now we are getting an error here so this is showing that cards table doesn't exist now if you come to this model here simply open this model you can see our model name is cart and our table name is also cart so we we'll check this uh, migration let's open the migration you can see the table name is cart and uh, the model is uh, expecting it to be cards okay so simply specify the table i uh, earlier also i specified that uh, in this case you simply have to specify the table variable here that is cart and uh, you are good to go now this error should be resolved now you can open the home page and uh, let's go to the product here and let's try clicking on the add to cart 
and you can see it is added to the cart but we are not getting any success message or something you go to the php my admin let's open php my admin and let's open the database and uh, let's go to the table cart and you can see the product is added and the id of the cart id and this is the id of the table and this is the user id and the product id and then the created and updated okay so the item is added to the cart but uh, we are not getting any success message here that's because we haven't added that here so for that you can simply go to the auth and the login and uh, you can simply copy this from here okay copy these two lines the success and the error session and uh, you can come to the details blade here and uh, we can paste that uh, somewhere uh, like here after the image we can paste it okay and this should show that okay now if you click on this uh, let's refresh this page and uh, click on this you will get the success message here see product added to the cart successfully if you go to the table and refresh you can see one more item is added the same item is added once more okay so right now the quantity for that specific item is two so if you add it once more it will become three here okay so we'll be adding the quantity like this okay so you can see it is three now okay so that's it so it will keep on adding and if you delete one item it will delete this row from here and uh, that's how we will be managing the quantity right now let's create a page for the cart so we can create a view here let's come here and uh, create a new view cart.play.php and uh, here we can copy this and uh, paste that on the cart okay so instead of this product okay we can keep it to product itself uh, so it will be easier to display the details and uh, we can okay uh, we can change the style a little bit and we can do that later so now uh, we can go to the controller okay let's copy paste this view here and then go to the controller and here we can create a function so function and uh, we can name it like uh, show cart or like cart or something and here we can uh, get the items that are in the cart so dollar cart items equal to and uh, we can get db table we can uh, use the class illuminate slash support slash brackets use the db class and uh, specify the table and the table is cart and then select and inside that we can specify the product id and uh, we can also specify the product id and uh, we can specify okay we can get the count of the item so we can uh, add one more query here so db row and uh, you can get the count here so here we are selecting the product id and then the count and we are showing that as quantity and uh, we will also be adding a var condition here so you can come here and uh, var var case okay, this var we have to add user id user id and uh, check it with the auth user of id now we can group it so like group by product id so group by product id and then you can call the get here so this is the query that we are going to run so you can uh, see this here okay hope it is visible properly okay so you have to add a uh, arrow here as well so here we have to change it to where not when okay so it's where and give the condition okay uh, now we can uh, simply return this and check how it is so simply return dollar cart items and uh, let's see so you can call this function so for that let's go to the routes web.php here and uh, we can add a route that is so it will be a get route so you can duplicate this route here and you can remove this id from here and uh, you can change the class the function to uh, show cart and uh, cart dot show okay so this will be our route so now we can call this route and uh, see for that you can copy this name from here and uh, we can go to let's go to include and header 
and here we can add it somewhere okay we can add it here so let's add the route here route okay route and add the name of the route here and then change this to cart that's it now you can refresh the page and check let's refresh this page and you can see we are having this cart option here click on that and you can see product id 1 and we are having the quantity that is 3 so if you go to the table you can see user 1 is having 3 and uh, that 2 the product is same okay so the quantity is 3 and the product id is 1 so let's add some other product as well so let's go to the home page you have to remove it okay and uh, we can add maybe product 3 let's add product 3 add to cart now go to the cart and you can see we are having i will zoom it a little bit hope it is visible now okay so you can see product id 1 and uh, the quantity for that product uh, then product id 3 you can see the quantity is 1 so our cart is working now we have to give it a ui so let's give that here in the show cart we can uh, return a view so view we can return the view cart and also return the cart items okay so you can see the view cart is here okay so let's open that and uh, here we are uh, okay we copied and uh, pasted uh, the things from the products okay earlier so we have to modify that so let's uh, change this to cart items so cart items let's change this to tola cart something or maybe item something okay and uh, okay you will not be having uh, the product name and image etc for that you will have to fetch the details here and then send it let's use join query here add this join here you can add this here and then in the select you can add cart dot product id and uh, here quantity and uh, give a comma and uh, here we can fetch like product title and price also in the word you can add cart dot here and in the group by also we can add cart dot product id give a comma here and products dot products dot title and price so here we are fetching the details from the products table for the items in the cart and uh, then uh, we can display that here and right now we'll be having all the details here so first of all we can simply return this uh, cart items and see how it will be and uh, dollar cart items and uh, now we can print this one you can see that now we are getting the product id one and uh, quantity that is three title that we fetched from the products table and the price so these things are fetched from the products table for the items and the quantity we can see that here okay so now our data is correct now we have to add this to a ui so for that we can return the view here okay return this to the view okay and uh, in the view let's open the view cart here and here we are getting okay the cards here cart item cart and uh, okay let's change this to cart of image okay we are not returning the image so you can if you need the image you can add that as well okay so the image is not required right now since it is the cart you can add the image if you want to add the image and uh, okay we can also keep the image in this case okay so let's add the image also here okay here you can add the image so products or uh, dot image and uh, you can add that here as well okay. and now you have added the image and it should load now we can go back to the cart here we are having the cart of image and uh, then uh, slug we are not fetching it you can fetch it okay we'll do that so let's change this product to cart here as well and this one as well okay so title price and uh, slug okay so we can add the slug as well here okay so you can uh, uh, give a comma here and add the product dot slug here and uh, we can add that here as well okay. give a comma and the product slug 
okay so hope it is visible for you so this is the query complete query okay if you are having any doubt you can leave a comment or you can join the whatsapp group and uh, we can discuss that okay and here uh, we will be getting all those details so it is correct right now and you can change the ui a little bit from here okay and this should be enough refresh the page and uh, you can see we are getting an error okay so we are using product somewhere if you scroll down you can see that we are having this product here so change this to cart here okay uh, we will not be having the pagination so you can remove that so now it should be enough refresh the page here and you can see the cart is working okay so right now you can see the image is too big and uh, it is not properly aligned we can fix that you can see the cart is working right now okay here we can give the width of the image something like 200 pixel or something and uh, now that should reduce the image size now we have to align these two so we can try checking on bootstrap documentation and check if we can find uh, something that fits our need come to the documentation of bootstrap and uh, we can try check for some cards here let's scroll down and uh, see if we could find something with the image on the left and the content on to the right section okay we can use this one okay so you can copy this one and we can paste that here okay and paste that here inside the call here uh, we might not need this call uh, but let's keep that uh, we don't need this row as well uh, but we can keep that uh, let's see and uh, here we can change all these details to that so let's copy this image url from here and uh, we can keep that here okay and title okay we can get the title here from here okay let's include this link as well and uh, we can give that here okay that should be working okay and one more thing that is the price so we can get that from here and the price we can give it let's see uh let's give that here okay in the description part we can edit that later on we can give the price here so let's add like price something and uh, okay and this should be enough and now we can remove this last updated or uh, you can simply show something on your cart maybe like you can show okay uh, we can remove that since we are not returning anything related to that you can remove that okay this much is enough okay we are showing the image price and the slug title now you can remove this one okay and that should be it you can simply refresh this page and okay you can see the ui is much better right now so you can click on this product one and it will take you to the product link okay so our cart is working right now now we need a checkout option so we need to implement the checkout and we can align this center we can do that later okay now we have to add a checkout button and on clicking that we will be integrating the payment option so that's what we will be doing now now before that we can add a pagination here so simply add paginate and uh, we can maybe set it to like five or something uh, right now in our cart we are only having one uh, two so we can see if you if you want to see the pagination you can set it to one for now and then we can change it later on so let me just format this query properly so you can uh, view and understand that properly so i have formatted the query you can see so i simply formatted the query so you can uh, easily view this and uh, type it properly okay so this is the same query okay and uh, you can set the pagination here to uh, one and uh, here uh, on the card section we can add a div here just like you did for the product so you can add a div here and dollar cart okay dollar carts i think so what was the name okay it is cart items okay dollar cart items of uh, links okay and uh, this should add the pagination simply refresh the page and you can see the pagination added here see one two so now let's change back uh, this to maybe like five or something so if there is more than five items we'll be adding this pagination you can come here and uh, change this to five here that's it now let's create a new migration so let's type php artisan make migration and uh, it is for orders so this table will be storing all the 
details of the orders so let's create that migration and uh, we also need a model for the same make the o capital and that's it so now we are having a table orders so let's uh, do the migration first of all so let's come here and uh, for the models uh, sorry uh, orders we need uh, let's see what all things we need we need the table id we will need user id let's keep it to in integer and uh, we will need product id so let's call a table we need quantity so let's add okay quantity and uh, we will need price total price so let's keep it to total price and uh, let's change it to maybe decimal or something okay float is fine okay and uh, now one more thing that is address we need to collect the address so let's change it okay, so dollar table string it will be address so this will be the delivery address okay let's collect the phone number and uh, okay we need the status so let's set the status so here we will be setting the payment status and uh, the payment completed status order completed status all those status will be setting it here uh, we will not be creating a new uh, for payment and etc so we'll be managing all the status here and uh, address phone number maybe we can also collect the pin code so let's add that table of sorry string of pin code okay we can set the status to be nullable or we can set a default value for the status so let's set this to nullable for now and we have to add the timestamp here and uh, that is enough and here on the down we can add schema drop if axis and uh, the table name that's it. so our migration is done so let's do php artisan and migrate so we have migrated the table and uh, now we can move to the model that is orders let's add the variable dollar table in case this throws an error you can add it okay orders it is orders table name is orders okay and uh, that is it now now we have to go to the controller so let's create a new controller for handling everything related to the cart sorry orders we can create a new view here so let's go to the views and uh, here we can create let's add a file like maybe checkout or uh, something so maybe make it like checkout.blade.php and here we need to collect the address and uh, the details for delivery so we can do that here here i have added this form you can simply pause the video and type this so in order to reduce the video length i am simply posting it so you can type this we simply added uh, this address field you have to enter the address here and uh, a field for entering the pin code and that's it and a button to proceed that's it so this is a simple form that we have added here and uh, we'll be adding the action and the method is post you have to add the csrf token here and uh, nothing else so this is a very simple form that we have added here so you can type this in so let's check if we are missing something else okay let's go to here okay we need the phone number as well so let's uh, collect that as well so you can add one more field for the phone number so let's duplicate this line and uh, here we can make this okay this text that's fine can change this to phone can copy this one and uh, let's add that here here and here as well okay so phone number okay so here we have added the option to enter the phone number as well so we are entering the address phone number and the pin code so that's it i think there is nothing else we need to collect so that's it on proceeding we'll be moving to the payment part now we have to add the route for these so we can uh, come to the web.php here and uh, let's add a route here okay let's duplicate this line and uh, here we can uh, maybe change it to checkout check out okay and uh, we can uh, change this to checkout.show and uh, this one we are doing it inside the no controller so that is order manager okay order manager and let's add that to the top this one okay 
So I have added this as a use statement to the top. That's it. And um, we have to create a new function that will be show checkout or something. Okay, that's it. So this is our route. You can type this in. Now let's open the controller. Okay, so it is available here. Okay, so open this one, and here we can write the function show checkout, and we will be returning the view that is we are creating the checkout that is this one so you can see that here okay so this is our view we are simply returning that okay and that's it so this will show the details there so you know if you want to display some details in the checkout you have to maybe fetch that details here and then show that there i think we may not need that here so we can avoid that we don't want to increase the length of the video so we can keep it to simple now uh, we have to add one more post request uh, to process this address and all we have to store that to the database and uh, then uh, we have to move to the payment so for that we can create one more function let's create checkout okay something let's change the name to checkout maybe post or something okay and here we will be receiving the address and all those details uh, we can validate that dollar request of validate we'll be having the address so it will be address here address set it to required we'll be having the pin code so let's change the city to pin code and one more thing that was uh, phone number okay so it is phone so you can check the name that we are using here okay you have to specify the exact name that you are giving here okay so this name is important i'm using the exact names here okay and uh, let's give the semicolon here now validate is complete now we have to store these details so let's store that dollar order equal to no order sorry order this order okay. you have to use this exact model okay and uh, now we can save the details we need the product ID, user ID, quantity, and then these details, okay. Okay, now here we are having all the details. You can see product ID. Okay, let's keep that one here. Okay, so the product ID, total price and quantity, we have to fetch it from the cart. So we'll be fetching those details here once more and uh, we'll be adding this address and uh, pin code phone number etc along with that and then we'll be storing that to the order so let's if we can simply store that we can return something let's complete that and uh, we'll move to that okay return back to checkout now we can return the user back to the uh, orders page or something uh, we'll not okay we can make an orders page okay so the video will keep on becoming longer so maybe for now we can return the user to home page something okay okay so let's see what home page will be so the home page will be the list of the products uh we can redirect back to the home page that's fine okay that's fine uh we will uh, we haven't created the orders page right now later we'll be doing that okay now uh, we can add with success and order place success maybe we can redirect the user back to cart that is much better cart dot show you can call that here okay call that here okay and return with error you can show some uh place okay this is not error you can uh, type some error okay now this will be our error message that's it so here we need to fetch these details we can go to the products manager and uh, here we can uh, copy this query from here and we can add that to the order so here we can add that here okay and uh, we can change this to get here instead of paginate you can change this to get now we will be having all the details here inside this cart items now we we only need uh we don't need the title and all so we can remove that it is not necessary image is not necessary slug is also not necessary we need the product id and the price okay and uh, i can remove the same here mage slug 
the title is not required so we can use that here so you can come here and dollar cart items of product id so we can, we will be getting more than one product ids so we can you can either make multiple orders or uh, you can store all the product ids and the quantity as a json to this variable so maybe we have to change the orders uh, my this uh, migration so we have to make the let's come to this okay here we can change this to maybe text here okay let's keep it to text and uh, you can do the same for order id as well and we'll be storing a json here okay so we'll be doing this as a single order and we'll be adding the details here as a json okay total price we'll be adding this as an integer itself okay we'll be uh, adding this uh, prices and then we'll be adding that here okay first of all we can uh, check if this is empty or not you can type if dollar cart items is empty if it is empty you can uh, return something return redirect user to let's redirect the user this okay back to the cart add this here and uh, you can type cart is empty so you can redirect the user here if this is empty okay if this is empty that means the cart is empty so after that we might need to create a variables and uh, we will need to loop through the cart items and uh, we will have to collect the product id and the quantity and then we'll be calculating the total price uh, here in the cart items we'll be getting the quantity and the price for one item so we'll have to multiply them and then add that to the variable so i'll be doing that here here i have added these you can uh, see i have created an array here for product ids and the quantities and uh, total price variable i will be adding that here and uh, we are assigning each items product id to the array you can see the quantity as well we are assigning it here then we are calculating the total price here okay and we are adding that here we are calculating the price uh, according to the quantity of each item and then we are adding it to the variable here now uh, we can uh, give that here so change this here and uh, we have to encode this to json so json encode and uh, we can pass dollar product ids okay and uh, just like that for the quantity as well json encode and dollar quantities okay and the total total price that is dollar total price so this should be enough uh, we might have to uh, migrate the file once more otherwise uh, this one uh, we change this to text right or you can either change it manually or you can run this command you can type php artisan migrate and roll back then give the path to the file that is orders file okay so this is the path you can type this and hit enter now we have uh, roll back this migration and now you can migrate it once more so let's come here and remove the roll back from here and uh, hit enter that's it now we have migrated this file and uh, we are good to run this now after saving this to the orders table maybe we can clear the cart as well okay so db we can call the table cart and we can add a where condition where user id and you can pass the user id so user id both of user of id and one more thing that is you have to delete it all the delete that's it now this will clear everything from the cart okay cart for that specific user add this after saving this okay so this will save everything inside the cart to the orders table and this will after saving uh, it will delete everything with the user id okay for that specific user it will delete everything from the cart so that's it now uh, our uh, function is complete so let's try running this and check everything is working or not so for that we have to add a route first of all so let's come here and uh, we need a post route or something let's check it okay we need a post route add it as a post and let's check out that is fine and uh, we can change this to post check out post something 
and uh, we have to call checkout post okay okay and you can copy this route name from here and uh, we can add that in the checkout blade here and add that here okay in the action okay sorry you have to call the route here and then add that here okay so this will call this and uh, we'll be sending all these details to that route and here we will be entering that here okay and everything is working okay so let's try running it and check everything is working or not uh, before that we have to add this uh, checkout at the cart here so let's add a link somewhere here so this is our cart we can add a checkout button maybe after the pagination we can add a checkout button so let's add a div here and we can add a link here okay and here charia and uh, we can add the route and this one okay now we can uh, add it as check out and uh, you can make this a button class btn b btn uh, maybe success or something okay this is fine uh, we will work on the design later on so simply add this link here okay add this link and uh, you can run this now you can refresh this page and you can see the checkout button is added here let's click on this and uh, you can see address option you have to enter the address here okay we are having the address option here now let's enter the address here now you can enter the address details here you can simply enter whatever address you want to fill here and enter the phone number and then the pin code and then you can click on proceed here and here you can see that we are redirected to this uh, dot show maybe we haven't added the route so that's why it is getting redirected to the name so let's go back so the error came in from here you can see this area so we have to redirect the user to the route and pass this route name. okay so we simply uh, added this uh, without this route so that's why uh, it showed like that uh, but still we are getting this uh, cart items of empty and uh, on checking the database you can see on these table orders we are having the order added properly and uh, there is no mistakes you can see we are having the phone number and the address the quantity and the product ids everything is added properly but we are getting this error right so let's check why that has happening to check that we can simply try cleaning this uh, and uh, let's clean this orders table and let's try adding uh, more items to the cart once more so let's go back and uh, go back to the right now the cart will be empty okay simply refresh the page and you can see nothing is there okay now uh, you have to add something okay so you can come here and they can come here let's add product one and let's add something from here also product four okay you can add that now you can go to the cart and we are having two items click on checkout okay let's enter this one so we are getting that error still and uh, the data is getting inserted here so that should be because we are de deleting that there. Uh, let's check that part so here let's scroll down and uh, i did find that we are uh, doing the same mistake here on the success part and on the error part as well so that was the mistake so we simply have to add the route here nothing else so nothing else is the issue you simply can add this here okay so we forgot to add the route specify the route here uh, in, we simply added the route name and uh, it will simply redirect to that uh, specific name only so you have to add this route which is important so don't forget that so make sure that you add the route properly and that should pr solve the problem that was nothing major you simply have to give the route here now let's go back and uh, here it would have been added okay it is added probably now our cart will be empty and uh, let's go back to home page and uh, let's add one item let's add this one and let's go to the cart let's click on proceed and uh, let's fill this one let's click on proceed here and uh, you can see we are back on the cart uh, we are not getting any message here because we haven't added that session part here okay so click on this one and you can see the item is added here okay so it is added to the orders properly so we will be getting this uh, success message here uh, let's add that to the cart so for that you can simply go to the login page where we added that section here uh, here okay okay this one okay so you can copy this much from here 
and uh, you will almost need this everywhere so let's add that on the cart okay let's let's add that maybe below this row here okay and uh, we also might need this in the checkout page as well i'm not sure still we can add that here so maybe after this heading you can add that and on the details page it may not be needed okay and here on the products page still you can add that anyway uh, only if we are uh, returning that uh, you will be showing that message there okay so right now we can keep it like this and uh, now we can try running it once more simply add that to the uh, add this one to the checkout and to the cart page that's it so let's go to the home page here and let's add a few items to the cart add it to cart go back okay go back and add this one to the cart add to cart let's add a few more items let's add two to the cart add to cart now go to the cart and we are having three items okay let's click on proceed so the total will be like some of this and the quantity is one i guess so let's add one more item maybe one more product one okay can add this one more time and uh, you will be having two item of this one uh, we are not printing the quantity here okay we can do that also okay right now we can click on proceed let's fill this one click on proceed and you can see order place successfully and here on the table you can see one more item is added you can see the quantity and you can see the price everything see this is the total price okay so we will be multiplying the price of one item uh, with the quantity and then uh, you will be showing that here okay so this is the total price and uh, we are having that here and uh, that's it so if you need more details maybe like the price of each item so you can do the same logic that is this you can add an array here and you can collect the price of each item and keep that here then you can on on counting the total you can simply uh, count multiply that and uh, you can simply get the total here that's it so right now we only need this one so you can uh, do that now uh, we have to proceed with the payment option so first of all let's fix the cart so let's add the quantity option here for that you can simply let's add that here okay you can come here and uh, you can simply add a dollar cart and of quantity okay so we are already fetching the quantity here and uh, we are passing so you can uh, simply show the quantity here okay so maybe like you can specify quantity or like pound or something you can uh, specify that here and then you can show that here okay now let's go back to the cart and check if it is working so let's go back to the home page and let's add something let's add this to the cart let's add it once more and let's go to the cart and you can see the quantity is two you can add more items and it will be showing properly okay so the cart is fixed now now we have to move with the payment option so for the payment option we might need we will need one more uh, column here so i'm not going to create a new table uh, so let's create a column here itself and um, you can add one more column so instead of migrating once more you can add that here okay anyways we might need to uh, delete this so you can uh, migrate once more let's go back to the migrations and here we can open the migrations here and uh, we can add one more thing that is the let's add payment id okay and also you can set this to the nullable so because uh, there won't be a value at first uh, but uh, after using a web book we'll be filling this uh, payment id and the status also so we'll be setting the status to completed or something uh, after the payment is successful okay and uh, that's it so we have to run this so let's roll back once more and uh, let's migrate once more and that's it so hope you can see this is the command that i run so this is the rollback command you can pause the video and uh, you can uh, check this one okay and uh, you can migrate it okay again so right now the table will be empty and uh, this option will be added so that's it now uh, okay we can proceed with the payment for that let's come here so we'll be using stripe for the payment so let's implement stripe we can uh, come to the order manager here instead of redirecting this to the cart page we can uh, maybe redirect the user to the order page uh, the payment page okay so we need a uh, product sorry order id this order tables id and uh, we will need the total price okay nothing else we will need the order id 
that is the id in this table okay not the user id or the product id we need the order id and the total price that's all that we will be needing uh, so we are making it as simple as possible and uh, we can redirect the user to the stripe posted check uh, payment option so we'll be doing that here so let's add stripe to our project so you can type composer require stripe slash stripe hyphen php okay simply run this one composer hyphen require stripe okay so run this command and uh, it will add stripe to your project now stripe is added to the project and uh, now we can add uh, each item we can either add the order as a whole and we can do the payment or you can uh, add each item and uh, you can use the stripe checkout and uh, we can uh, we can implement that so this will be what we are going to implement you can see we'll be using the checkout and uh, we will be creating this uh, line items and we'll be passing the quantity and the price and we'll be also passing some uh, name of the product and all uh, so that's what we are going to pass and also we can pass the success cancel etc payment mode will be card and uh, this is what we are going to use and this we will be getting the redirect url to the stripe hosted page will be redirecting the user to that page so first of all you need a stripe account so let's sign into the stripe account and uh, get our stripe id that is the api key so you can log into your stripe account i am using a test account here and uh, now we can go to the developer options here on the top and you can go to api keys here you can uh, copy this uh, secret key from here you need the secret key so you can click on reveal and you can copy this you can come here inside this for each okay come inside this for each for the checkout post function and inside this for each after this you can add this much okay you can add this line items and uh, we are specifying the currency you can specify any currency we can set it to usd also okay you can set it to usd anything okay let's set it to usd here and uh, then we can specify the title and we will be passing the product name here okay like this and then you can pass the number of units and amount and the quantity okay amount here and the quantity here you have to multiply the amount with 100 to get that properly and uh, that's it so you have to add this here and then you can come here and you have to specify dollar list items uh, line items equal we have to specify it as an empty array that's it now we have to come here inside this if condition order of save and uh, we can create an object for stripe so you can type dollar stripe equal to and uh, we can create stripe client and call you have to pass uh, the key first okay you can pass the key here you have to call new stripe client okay and uh, you can pass the api key that we copied you can paste the api key here so add that api key here so you can keep this api key inside the dot env file okay let's keep that inside the env file okay let's cut that from there and you can come here and let's create one here let's, okay let's add something like stripe key and uh, we can add that here let's add this here and uh, you can copy this key here and uh, let's go to the config section where is it here and the app you can come here and let's duplicate this line you can paste this here and uh, this here you can remove this default value and uh, that's it okay you can add this here okay maybe you can uh, change this to smaller if you want to stripe uh, let's keep it like that okay so this is it and uh, now you can call that here okay so that will be config and you can call app dot then the key that's it okay so now this will give the stripe key here okay. after this you can simply add this one okay i have added this so i will show you from where you can refer this so you can refer this documentation url uh, to create a session and uh, you can see we can pass the success message success url and uh, then the uh, items details here and the payment and all those details you can check that here okay so we'll not be wasting more time here because we already have videos on uh, how to integrate stripe and all in detail so you can watch that if you want more insight on integrating stripe so we will not be explaining this a lot so you can type that 
so you can simply post this video here and uh, you can type this in simply add this here okay so here we are passing the items here so we are adding the items inside the for loop you can see inside the for each we are adding this here and uh, then we are adding that here okay so you can add that here okay so you need this type object here that's it and after this you will be getting the redirect url inside this one so you can redirect the user to that url and uh, the user will be redirected to that url and uh, let's let's redirect that okay let's return redirect okay stripe url okay and here you can see we are passing a uh, your route here that is for success and uh, for uh, error so we need to create this route so you can see that we are passing the order id and all so let's create this route so this will be a get request so let's go to the routes here open the web.php and here we can create a get route so let's duplicate this line and uh, let's change this to get method and uh, let's add this to maybe like okay payment slash success okay you can change it like this and uh, let's change the name to payment dot success okay and uh, we can we can change the function let's change the function to payment success and uh, let's change this to some uh, controller okay let's change it to order order controller okay order manager that's fine and uh, we need one more that is for the error okay so let's add that as well payment slash error change this to error and the function name will be payment error or something okay now we need to return something uh let's uh for now we can return uh, uh, error record from that uh, function so let's go inside this so you can copy this function names and you can go inside this order manager and uh, here we can come to the bottom and let's add this function here function can uh, paste the function name here okay here also function and uh, paste the name here okay so we are having these two names so return we can return uh let's let's say we can error okay that's it so we can a return more uh, specific view later on so return success that's enough so this is enough for now uh, okay and uh, we are accepting a uh, order id here so we can do that dollar order id so okay order id so maybe you can print that as well here uh, plus dot okay dot you can print dollar order id okay so we are passing that here okay so here okay where is it uh, on the let's go to the checkout page where is it okay okay let's go to the order manager here and uh, we are passing that here okay you can see that we are passing that here okay okay so this uh, when we are redirected uh, you will be having the order id as well so this is the order id that uh, you will get here and on saving you get that detail here and uh, we will be passing that along with the success url and you can check things uh, with this order id so it is useful now uh, we can uh, try running this one okay so they should be working if uh, you can also add a try catch here in case you are getting some errors so you can add a try catch here and uh, you can handle that right now we can try running this and check if it is working so this is our cart right now you can simply refresh this page and check we are having two quantity of uh, product one and one quantity of product two let's add something else as well okay let's go to the home page and uh, let's add product three so let's add this to cart now you can go to the cart here and uh, we can click on checkout fill this one click on proceed to pay and now we are getting a uh, error here that is the title so for the title we are not fetching the title that was the mistake so you can uh, come here on the query to the cart and all cart and product details etc you can come here and uh, here uh, you can copy this one you have to fetch the product title as well product dot title so these are the names that we are using inside the product table okay you have to be specific or you will get error title add that here as well on the select and here as well okay now save this and this should solve the problem now you can simply refresh this page and you can re submit this one continue and uh, this solves the issue and you can see we are on the stripe payment page and you can see the total payment and you can see product one the quantity is two you can see the uh, each payment uh, 
price for the each item you can see that here and then the total here then product 2 you can see the quantity you can see the quantity for product 3 and the price here so everything is here and uh, you can see we are having the option to fill the card details payment holder name and uh, the address etc so you can fill this and uh, click on continue so you can fill these uh, details this is the test mode card you can get that online you can simply search stripe test cards and you'll get that documentation and you can fill that and uh, this is in test mode you can see that here okay so now you can fill these details and click on pay now you can see the payment is successful here now we are redirected back to the order success page but we are getting an error in that page that is fine uh, we can handle that you can see we are redirect back to the success page so there is no error here now inside this function we are getting an error that is too few arguments okay so we are passing the arguments we are expecting the arguments but we are not passing that on the url so that should be with the route area we forgot to add this on the route area so simply copy this and uh, you can come to the web.php and uh, here we have to add this one okay so we forgot to add this one and that's all that's all that was the error that is nothing else okay simply add this one here and you're good to go now here uh, this redirect will be like this so instead of this you have to be keeping it like this okay so it should be like this it would have been like this uh, if we have uh, you know added that properly earlier so let's try this once more so you will understand everything so if you go to the cart the cart will be empty right now now let's add one more thing let's add this to the cart right now we only need one so let's click on proceed let's fill the details here you can see the payment option arrived and uh, fill this details you can see we can uh, fill this fake card details and you can see you simply have to add a uh, expiry date which is higher than the current uh, month and the year so you can specify something higher than uh, the current year etc and uh, it will work you can give any cvv here that will work since this is in test mode and you can fill the details here and click on pay now now you can see it is redirected to the page and uh, it is properly working and the message is also printing so here you can design a beautiful success page you can simply go online and search for any page that doesn't matter because we will be handling the actual database processing from the webhook so we will have to create a webhook url and we'll be adding that to the stripe uh, right now so this page you can design it and make it uh, user friendly and whatever that you want to do you can do that here that doesn't matter okay you also doesn't need this uh, id here in case you need uh, simply i pass that so you can uh, simply remove it in case you don't need because uh, we don't need that so it is better to remove it right now it is not it is not available because we haven't had that so you can remove this id because we don't need that okay so you can remove that id so we will be doing all the database insertion from the webhook so we'll have to create the webhook for stripe so here in the orders table you can see that we are having everything is happening uh, but you are not getting the payment status and the payment id here that's because we haven't done that part okay so we are collecting the payment and uh, if you go to the stripe dashboard let's go to the stripe dashboard and let's go to where is the transaction let's refresh this page and uh, you can see two transaction has been happened here okay you can see we are having the payment one that is uh, this is the latest payment that we made you can see the details here all the test details that we have entered you can see everything is entered here okay so the payment is successful and you can see that here but we are not getting the payment id and all those details in c inside the uh, database so for that we will be implementing the webhook so we have to implement the webhook here so you can simply add a webhook endpoint here so you can click on add and you will get a sample code here you can select php and uh, you can get the code sample code here and you can refer this and implement it we'll be doing it so here you can select the events here so we will be choosing the checkout event you can also go for the payment intent here you can see payment intent this one also uh, we'll be going for the checkout so we'll be adding this checkout event and uh, then we'll be proceeding so first of all we have to create this uh, api for uh, adding this as a webhook here so let's install the api onto the laravel application so here on the laravel application we have to add api so php artisan install api and hit enter now this will add the api section to the laravel application so wait for this to complete 
now the API will be added. You can see it is asking you to migrate once more. Okay. Uh, we have to migrate the pending. Okay. You can type yes and hit end up. It will the migrate the this file that is token uh, table and it will be added. So you can see we have one new migration and it is added. Now uh, we will also be getting this api.php in the route section. That is what we need right now. You can uh, remove this one from here. Okay. Or you can keep it there and uh, let's remove this much from here. You don't need the middleware as well. So remove that. And here we can set the URL to like uh, Stripe slash webhook. Okay. And uh, we can create a uh, let's let's use the order controller itself and we can create let's add this as a use statement on the top and let's create a function web hook stripe okay web hook stripe okay so add this route here and you can add this route uh, so you can make this any okay so let's make this any and it can accept get and post we can add this route here and now we have to create this function so go inside this order manager and uh, you can scroll to the bottom and we can create the function order stripe uh, webhook stripe and here we can handle the stripe webhook so here i have added the code for handling the webhook for stripe we already have detailed video on how to implement a stripe webhook so you can watch that if you need more explanation on this so you can see that we are adding the stripe webhook secret and uh, we have to get it after adding this URL and then uh, we are collecting the payload here and the signature and we are verifying that here okay and uh, then uh, we are handling the errors here and here you can see this is the main part and you can see we are checking the event type that is session checkout session completed okay and on this event getting triggered we will be handling this and uh, we are collecting the object here and in the metadata we are passing the order id on the top you can see here on the metadata we are passing the order id so for this purpose we are passing that okay and uh, here we will get the order id like that and then we are getting the payment id and uh, we will be using this uh, find to get the order with the id that we are passing order id and uh, we will be updating that table here okay so we'll be updating that uh, row and we'll be adding the payment ID and the status will be updated to completed here. That's what happening here. So it is a very simple and easy webhook implementation. And uh, if you need more details about this, you can watch our previous videos. We have explained this in detail. So you can watch that and understand this in detail. We have to add this inside the route. So let's open the route section, go to the API and uh, here okay we have already added that here so you have to specify the order manager class and uh, controller and uh, we are specifying this function here so now we have to call this from the route api so let's go to that and uh, here uh, okay we are making a small mistake here you can simply add this inside the array and that's it okay so now we are calling the function here and uh, that is from this controller that is order manager you can click here and you can see we are connected okay and that's it now you're good to call this route uh, but you need this url to be accessible uh, publicly otherwise uh, you cannot share the localhost address with uh, stripe and uh, stripe could not access this url okay so you have to use something and uh, you have to host this for uh, temporarily you have to make the localhost accessible publicly for some time for that you can use this one or you can use uh, uh, nginx or something uh, that you are familiar with so i found this on the online you can simply use this one you can simply select laravel here and select the port uh, which we almost run on 8000 most of the time so if you're not changing the port it will be 8000 itself and uh, you can check this off okay you don't need these things you can simply check that off and you can run this one this will run out of the box without uh, installing anything because you already have SSH and all installed. So you simply have to run this command. Simply copy this and uh, you are good to go. Now open your terminal here and uh, you can open this and here open a new terminal and come inside the project directory. You can paste this command here. You have to change localhost to let's change that to 
127.0.0.1 okay now you can hit enter now this will create i can type yes here and hit enter now uh, you can uh, simply leave the password empty hit enter this will create a public url for this project and you can see we are having two urls https and http uh, you can use the https version you can click on this link and you will be able to see this okay you can click on enter site so here our website has loaded but uh, the HTTPS version is not uh, working properly. Let's uh, change this one to HTTP and uh, this is working fine right now. You can uh, copy this link. Okay. So use the HTTP version instead of HTTPS. Anyway, this is for a testing purpose. So we don't need this for much long. And our route will be slash API slash and uh, the path was Stripe slash webhook. Now this will be our route. You can copy this one URL and uh, you can paste that on the Stripe dashboard. Okay, you can come to this webhook section here and click on add endpoint and you can paste this URL here. Okay, so this is our API path here and this is the public URL that we got. You can change this HTTPS to HTTP. Uh, I found this uh, having some issues sometimes. Uh, so you can simply use HTTP instead of HTTPS. That's that works anyway we need this only for some a few times sometimes because uh, we are testing this webhook right now you can host your project actually and uh, you can use the url here so for testing it is uh, better to use this one okay and um, you can add the event that is checkout what is it okay you can add the checkout section uh, we don't need all of these if you want to handle them you can uh, let's add that anyway and you can click on add event and uh, you can uh, save it okay that's it and you can click on add endpoint now this will add the webhook endpoint you can see it is added and you can click on reveal for the secret okay you can copy this one and paste that to the environment and come back to the ide and uh, here let's go back to the order manager and uh, here uh, we have to provide the key here okay here so you can either add this to the environment variable or you can simply copy paste here okay you can add this like this also that works anyway okay so let's add this to the environment variable you can uh, copy this here and uh, you can come to dot env and uh, here let's make one more and let's remove this and let's add this here and we can paste the key, secret key that here okay and uh, you need this to be added to the config as well you can come uh, to the app.php in the config let's duplicate this one and paste this here and here that's it so that's it you are good to go you can add the config and uh, the dot env and that's it okay paste the values here so this is a right way to do it you can also add that directly here as a string that also works okay and uh, now that is added and uh, our webhook will be working fine so let's try running this and check everything is working or not so for testing we can check if the cart is empty okay cart is empty now we can add a few items to the cart let's add a few items so let's add this one as well let's add one more item let's add this three let's add this two times okay now we are having four items i guess okay two quantity of uh, item three and one one okay now you can click on checkout fill this details and click on proceed here we can fill in the details of the demo card fill the details here and you can see all the product details are correct anyways okay so you can check that here and you can click on pay now so now the payment is successful and we are we are redirected back to the success page let's go to the database and refresh this one and you can see that the order is getting inserted but the payment id and the status is not getting updated so for that you can go to the stripe dashboard and if you refresh this page you will be able to see this events happening you can see there is an error to this one you can see this is the error response okay if you are not seeing this one you can uh, go back to the webhook section here and uh, or you can simply go to the events here and uh, you can see events happening here okay so it is better you can go to the webhook and select the webhook and uh, here you will be able to see the errors okay so these are the errors that we got uh, you can uh, see 
this is an HTML error. So this should be related to Laravel something. Something related to Laravel. You can simply copy paste this HTML uh, to some uh, HTML reader and uh, you will be able to see what this error is. You can copy this uh, completely. You have to copy this HTML from here to here. You can copy that fully and you can paste that here in a ID and you can simply add the code to an HTML file and you can try running this one. And you can see this is the error that we are good getting. Okay. So this shows that we are not having this payment status, uh, which is a very simple error. So let's close this one and you can come here and uh, here we can change this payment status to status because we are not having a payment status. It is just status. Okay. So that was the error. Now you can try resending the webhook event or that you can come to the Stripe dashboard and uh, here on the top, you will be having an option to resend it. Okay. So you can click on this recent here, click on that. Now wait for this to happen. You can refresh this page and uh, you will get this uh, checkout session completed here. And you can go to the database and uh, refresh this one. And you will be able to see the payment ID here once this gets refreshed. Okay. Okay. You can see uh, the payment ID and the status is changed here. Okay. So for that specific order ID, you can see it is added as completed. Okay and here here you can see the checkout section and uh, you are getting the event that is successful okay so that's it it is a very simple uh, process you can simply add this here so this url might change uh, if you are disconnecting it so that happened for me once okay so i turned off the computer once and uh, that caused this issue that is the host is not accessible so the url changed you can simply change that when you're running it again you have to change it okay so simply change it and uh, you are you will be good to go okay so that is this error okay so the previous error was that html and uh, we corrected it simply change the payment status and uh, you are good to go okay this error happened to me since uh, there was a small power outage and the system was down and i had to run it again that's why uh, the host was not found okay so that that won't happen to you so you can ignore that okay so that's it. So our session is uh, working, that uh, our webhook is working properly. Now everything related to the e-commerce app is completed. So most of the things is completed. Uh, you can add a profile page if you want to. And uh, we also need one more thing that is the order history. That is important. Now we can do that. So here instead of uh, setting this to completed, you can set this as uh, payment completed. Okay. So. Uh, we can also set this as order completed once the order processing and all is completed. So right now the payment is completed. So you can set it as payment completed. So we might implement the admin dashboard as well. Uh, in case we are not, uh, since the video is almost uh, getting too long. So we might uh, stop it uh, without completing the admin dashboard. You can do that yourself. It is very easy. You simply have to handle a credit operation. So we already have a video on credit operations. So you can watch that and easily implement that. So right now we have to create a order history piece. So for that, uh, we can create a view. Anyway, we need a view. So let's create that. So order history, or you can simply keep it to history. Anyway, there is nothing else. So you can keep it to history and laid PHP. So you have to name it accordingly. Uh, if you're having any other files, which has similar meaning you have to name it properly okay you can also create folders like this okay you can create folders for the checkout you can create folders for product and all those things and you can handle that okay so right now we are copying this one you can copy the checkout page from here okay copy the checkout page so you will be using that design in the history page as well you can paste that here and uh, here we have to change few things let's check it out okay let's Go to the order manager controller. Okay. And here we can create a function, function order history. And we have to return the history. So let's uh, type order. Okay. Order equal to, we can uh, use the order model, order where you have to check the user ID, which is very important. User ID. Now give a comma here. You have to pass auth of user of ID. And uh, you can get all the items from the you can add this here 
uh, and uh, you can see uh, we are uh, decoding the JSON and we are doing the search and all then uh, listing all the title and all those details so you can add this you can uh, post the video and uh, you can type this in and uh, open this visible properly okay you can post the video and uh, you can type this now this will return all the order details and along with the name quantity and the price so let's it will it uh, right now we are returning the orders and uh, we will get the order details here so let's try running it for that we have to call this function somewhere okay so you can type this first of all and uh, then uh, we have to call this function you can come to web.php here and uh, create a route let's create this get route here and we can name it order slash history and you can name it order history itself order dot history okay and you can call the order history function here now this route we can call it and uh, that should return the json you can enter the route here and uh, you can see we are getting the data let's uh, print it properly and uh, you can see it is returning the items properly let's go to the bottom where we are having more than one quantity for each order you can see right now it is returning the quantity and the proper items with the name and all properly you can see this is the order id 10 and that is this one order id 10 we are having uh, three items with id 1 2 1 3 this is the product id okay and uh, this is the quantity of each uh, product respectively okay you can see in the same order we are having the quantity and this is the total price and uh, just like that you can see that here as well okay so we are fetching the details from the table and we are displaying that here okay so that's it so the price will be from the current price so if we update the price that will change now we can simply show this inside a view so for that you can uh, go back to the controller and here we have to return a view so let's create a view okay we have created a view so let's call that view the view was uh, let's say okay it was history so let's return view and it is history you will command pass the orders that's it now you can uh, give a semicolon here and uh, that is it our controller is completed now this will show the history of the items uh, order that we have made okay history of all the orders that we have made so we are not having a pagination added here so we can add that so i have added the pagination so you can uh, post the video and uh, add this so you can add the pagination here and uh, you have to update this code as well so update this post the video and uh, you can type this and uh, the pagination will be added we are fetching the price slug image quantity and the name here okay so we'll be getting all these details and we are passing that to the orders to the history view and we're passing the orders to the history view okay now we can go to the history view and uh, here i have changed the code of the cart you can see that so this is the code from the cart and i have changed the details i can change this for each to orders as order and uh, here you have to fetch the first image here we are fetching the first image because uh, we are going to get these product details as an array so we'll be inside this orders and inside the product details we'll be having an array of items and uh, then inside that we'll be having all these details okay so we're going to fetch the image of the first product whatever the product comes first we'll be showing the image of that okay and uh, then uh, we are going to show the product id product order id okay order id here then the payment id okay so the payment id here and then the total price here then we are going to show the product details so for showing product details we have to be inside a for each because it is an array and uh, you can see here we are showing this as a list and uh, we are showing the product slug here so this is the slug you can see so you have to type this and you can add this url here and the product name here and then the quantity you can see that here and the price is added here okay so we are adding the price quantity and the title okay so that's all are uh, shown here now if you run this you can see how it will be looking you can post the video and uh, you can type everything i will show you everything slowly so you can uh, post the video and type 
otherwise the video will keep on getting longer and longer so that's why i have already done it and uh, i'm showing this so you can post the video and type it anyway this is the same process as uh, what we have done on the cart section okay now here you can open the history page and you can see this is the history page we are having the image all the details if you go to the table you can see for the first few items we are not having the payment id and all those things and here we can see the product and uh, the quantity is one one that's why it is showing the same image and all so let's go to the last item and you can see the image changes because the last order if you go to the 11th order you can see the first item was uh, order product id 2 so the images of that of the second item and you can see on clicking this you can go to the product details as well click this and you can go to the product details we are having the quantity and the price and the price is that of uh, one item you can see that into two and that is 200 then it makes to the total okay so you can also see that the payment id is visible here and the order id everything is visible here so that's all with the order history maybe we can sort this uh, to show we can show the recent orders on the top and uh, order to the bottom so we can uh, do that for that you can come to this uh, order history here and uh, we can simply add uh, uh, order by and you can add order by id and uh, make it to dsc descending order and uh, that will do it you can refresh this page and uh, you can see we are getting the order by id and we are showing the latest orders on the top okay so hope you understand this so our order history is also added we can add that to the header section so for that you can uh, go to the web.php here and let's copy the name that is order history and we can go to header that is includes header and uh, here we can add that so maybe we can add that here let's add it once more d and we can add this one here so you can add this url here so let's add this and change this to order history okay we can change it to orders something like that okay and uh, we only need to show this so if the user is authenticated so we can cut this and uh, add this inside this okay and that is done now we can also add a home page here okay so route can call home here now we are having home right okay we are having the home okay and uh, that's it now we can also change this title something okay you can change it to something else let's uh, give a name you can give a name here and let's add the url there as well okay. route home you can remove this hash from here and uh, okay we also missed this one okay so that's it so we have changed almost everything so our app is almost complete on the user side so if you refresh this page you can see the app name is here on clicking that you will be taken to the home page and uh, we can see home page here as well order page here cart page here and all those details are here okay so you can see everything is working fine if you log out and uh, if you come back to the home page you will not be seeing anything here okay no order page and all those things so if you come to here and try to add to cart you will be redirected to the login page now we can log in once more and uh, we can check so we are redirected back here now you can see orders and uh, the card details all those things related to that specific user now we can log out and uh, check once more let's log in with our different user details and try okay invalid username and password let's check the user table and uh, check if we are having okay you are not having a user so we have to create one so let's create a new user so enter the details and click on sign up so the user is registered now we can log in once more hit on sign in and you are logged in now we can click on orders and you cannot see anything because the new user doesn't have anything so go to the cart and there's nothing so hope you understand so it is working since we are using the user id to fetch all these details it will be shown like this okay now let's add something to the cart so let's add something to the cart and uh, okay we are not having a delete option on the cart uh, we can add that it is a very simple uh, you can simply go to this web and uh, here near the cart where is it okay okay you can come here and uh, let's duplicate this line and uh, we need to add a route here okay this route cart slash delete or something and uh, we have to pass the id of the item so 
let's pass the id and uh, then uh, we can change the name to delete cart dot delete and uh, we'll be calling delete delete cart item or something okay okay so this will be the function so we can do this okay now let's go to this product manager anywhere okay that's fine and uh, here we can create this function and uh, we can delete the item so that is we are having the id here so dollar id and uh, you can delete we can add cart where you have to check the user id so user id give a comma here and then we can pass auth user of id and then we need one more thing that is the cart id so that is what we are passing here so we have to add a where or a cart id so it's not the product id it will be just id okay just id here and we'll be deleting that here okay so we can delete that and uh, that's all we can return something redirect back with the product deleted okay a product removed from cart successfully okay so that's better now this will delete uh, one item so for that we have to go to the cart show this function and uh, we have to pass the cart id as well okay so we are grouping it so we need the either we can select the uh, maximum or the minimum of the cart id uh, in that group so we can uh, do that so here we are selecting the minimum of the cart id you can add this and uh, we are getting this as a cart id here okay we are getting this as cart id and uh, now we have to pass this to this delete so we can go back to this uh, cart blade here and uh, here we have to add this link here we have to add the link to delete here so we can come here and add a link so let's add a href and uh, we can call the route here and pass the route name so you can see the route name here so the route name was something like dot delete card dot delete i guess so this is it card dot delete so we can call that you have to use the exact name then give a comma and pass the cart of cart id you are getting the cart id here not the id cart id you can see that here let's go to here and we are passing this as cart id okay you can also pass it as id that doesn't matter let's keep it to cart id and uh, we can add a uh, text that is the leaps here okay now this will remove the item now this is the cart let's uh, refresh this page and uh, you will be having the delete option let's click on this delete you can see the quantity reduced you can see quantity reduced by one so let's delete this one reduced by one see this one you can see that is totally removed so that is working so if you just go back to the table you can see everything is working see everything is working fine and order details okay there is no order for this current user that is logged in so we can try checking out for this user as well click on proceed and you can fill in this payment details and complete it click on pay the payment is successful you can see that here okay we forgot to uh, design the success page uh, we can show something here okay later on and uh, that means it will be added here on the let's go to the cart is clean right now okay so let's go back to you can see only the user id with one is remaining everything else is removed that means the card is clean for that user so let's go to the orders and you can see with uh, this user id 2 no is added okay so let's go back here let's go back okay let's zoom out and uh, let's go to this order section and you can see new order place for that user see and uh, that's it you can see the payment id we are not getting the payment id so let's check that as well so that is because this one has timed out and uh, it has stopped you have to run it again and uh, that will work so the webhook is working anyway so we are not going to run it again so you can uh, run this one again okay so you have to keep this running otherwise uh, it will not work so you have to keep this running so this might change the url you can see the url has changed right now see when we run it again uh, you can see the url has changed now you have to go to this uh, stripe and you have to update this url let's update that you can update this one here 
paste that here okay you can change that to http okay in case it is uh, getting updated you have to update it uh, sometimes it get updated so you have to update it okay now uh you can see the events here okay let's refresh this page and you will be seeing the event here so here we can see the event and uh, you can see it is showing an error so let's resend it now this should add the payment id properly you can see payment id is added here okay so let's refresh this page and you can see the payment id that's all now if you want to try it once more it should it will work anyway so if you want to see uh, you can try it it will work so that's all so this is our small uh, e-commerce application uh, we are having almost everything implemented we are having pagination for everything we are having cart we are having the order history we are having the home page and we are having the pagination here as well and we are having logout register user and login all those details and we have also implemented stripe and also with the webhook okay so we are having a webhook for the stripe as well so this is a very basic one but we are almost having everything that is required now what is remaining is that we need to implement a uh, admin dashboard for this okay and you can design this also okay so here you can see this is very basic design uh, we haven't done any styling here so this is a very basic bootstrap classes we had something something there and there and uh, that's it so you can design it and uh, make it much better so i will be adding more style to this and uh, will be hosting it on uh, this page here so you can come to this url and download that from here so i'll be hosting that here so you'll get the complete source code of this project here so you can download that from here i haven't uploaded it right now so i'll be uploading it here and i'll give the link on the description so if you want to download you can download it from here so now what you can do is you have to implement an admin dashboard you simply need a login you can use the same code that we are using here and we need to show the orders there okay you can simply fetch all the orders and show that there nothing else is needed you can simply fetch all the orders and show that there and uh, you can uh, also show the user details you can add a new user dd and all uh, you simply need a cred operation for all these and uh, in this product you can uh, add an option to add new product there so we here we are not uh, uploading the image you can either upload the image and uh, place the path here url is also fine you can make this option as a url and you can after uploading you can pass the url instead of the path so you can uh, either pass uh, the url or upload the image you can uh, do that likewise okay and uh, you can create a dashboard and uh, you can add the option to upload all these details okay so creating is very easy we already have a video on how to perform cred operations in laravel you can watch that and uh, this can be easily done so the demo is almost similar so you can watch that and do this so we'll not be doing the admin dashboard right now because the video is already long so we are concluding this video here so we are having almost everything implemented the ui is not up to the mark but we are having all the features implemented I have added some CSS classes and I have designed this a little bit more. You can see that. So I have changed the cart. I can see I have added a button. I have uh, added some classes to the button add-on. And uh, you can see on the product details, I have added a few CSS, made this image look better. And the title, the price and all those details, we have added a button here and uh, aligned it to sender. And on this area, we have added a button, add to cart it is very simple you can use the same button that you are giving here inside the details page you can use that same page here because uh, you are simply passing the id of that particular item and uh, you can click this and it will be added to the cart you can see that so let's add this product one okay so click on this add to cart and it will be added to the cart you can see the quantity is four click on this four two and it will be like five okay so it is added okay and the cart part you can see we are having the pagination and all those things and the order details we have added this kind of a ui and uh, i have updated all these details so you can do that i will be hosting the code to this specific uh, version and uh, you can download that from the link below so hope you like this video if you are having any doubt feel free to leave a comment and i'll be responding to them you can also join our whatsapp or discord groups and uh, we can have the discussions there if you like this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more such videos